God bless you. It is a joy to be able to greet you again in another Decision Time broadcast. My name is Elder Ernest Dunn, and I am so thankful that you have tuned in to hear another timely word. Today it's coming from Elder Harold Rapp Jr., and it is entitled, Transformed by the Renewing of Your Mind. Trust me, you do not want to change your dial. Decision Time is up next. I would like to address your attention to the 12th chapter of the book of Romans. Romans 12, very familiar passage of scripture, Romans 12. This is included in one of the most profound letters that Paul had written to the believers. It was not written to the church, but written to the saints in Rome. Similar in the concept and practice of what we had today in Sunday school, we talked briefly about the Roman Empire and the conditions of it. And I can assure you, even though we're talking about hundreds of years, even a few thousands of years ago, we see remnants of it right here and now. It is already written in the words of God, spoken by Jesus, even himself, that no matter how much we're going to pray, the only thing that can get better is us. Because the world is going to wax worse and worse. And truth being told, if we don't get it together, we're going to wax worse with it. We're not any longer talking about the last days to come. We are living in them. We are living in them now. I remember 20 years, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, just hearing the messages about preparing ourselves for the last days. And now to see the very thing that we have been hearing about and reading about manifesting in our own eyes. And yet we still set idle, caught up in routine. As if it's just happening around us and does not apply to us. Jesus is soon to come. It is time for renewal. The scripture reads, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. How holy, acceptable unto God. That's the only way that you can be. Which is your reasonable service. It be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say through the grace given unto me, to every man, every woman, every boy, every girl that is among you, not to think of him or herself more highly than he or she ought to think, but to think soberly according as God had dealt 
to every man and every woman the measure of faith. Simple thought in the text, transformed by the renewing of your mind. Transformed by the renewing of your mind. I believe it's in Proverbs 23 and 7, that first part of it says, so as a man think it in his heart, so is, so is he. God requires conditions. Granted, again, salvation is free. But we need to sustain it. Regardless of the teaching, once saved, always saved, that's a lie. Jesus made it known to his disciples, don't rejoice because the devils are subject to you, but rather rejoice that your names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Now, fast forwarding to Revelation, that if you don't meet the requirements that God has established that he had given unto John, your name can be removed. So that validates and negates the lie that once saved, always saved. Because salvation is only from the wrath of God which is to come. It is from the lake of fire, which is the second death. This is not the practice of the church in order to buck and to pry for position and title. No matter how faithful you are in your attendance in church, it is not good enough. You can't tithe enough, give an offering enough that's going to meet the conditions for God's holy kingdom. It is time for us to wake up and realize it is necessary for the renewing of our mind. We must be transformed. We, the church, even as Jesus had told Peter, he said, who do you say that I am? And Peter answered, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus' response was flesh and blood had not revealed that unto you. But my father, which is in heaven, and another passage goes on to say, verily I say unto you, Peter, you are Peter. In other words, you are correct. You are right. And upon this rock, the rock that I am, the Christ, the son of the living God, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. There are three things that's required of us in order to be transformed. Transformation is described to make a thorough or dramatic change in the form, appearance, or character of. And it's three basic words. Be, know, and do. Be, know, and do. What is the first thing? Be. Be transformed. 
But now let's talk about the process. Because the one that he says, present your bodies a living sacrifice, the first be is holy. Not, not a denomination, it is a lifestyle. It is a characteristic that God demands because, hallelujah. But even before we get there, he says, present your bodies. A living sacrifice, which means, guess what? You're not even your own. I'm not my own. I don't belong to me. And if you saved, you don't belong to you. We all belong to him. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. What? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own. Why? For you are bought with a price. Purchased. Not as slave, but as being adopted into the family of the living God. Therefore, glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are God's. It's the first thing we have to come to reality of. We don't belong to us, ourselves. And so if any of us have our own agenda, guess what? You are in error. So once we establish that, now we step into the characteristic of be holy. Because that's what we are striving to do. And it comes by instruction. 1 Peter 1, 15 through 16. But as he who has called you is holy... So you be holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, be holy, for I am holy. Well, where's that written? Let's start with Leviticus 19 and 2. Speak unto the congregation of the children of Israel and say unto them, You shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. It is written again in Leviticus 20 and 7, Sanctify yourselves, therefore, and be holy. For I am the Lord your God. It is written again, Leviticus 20 and 26. Does not the scripture say out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. So here's the third. And you shall be holy unto me. For I, the Lord, am holy and have severed you from other people. That you should be mine. When he said, I am a jealous God, he meant just that. It means it still. Being a member of the church does not guarantee that you're a member of the kingdom. Being the member of a church does not make you a member of his kingdom. That mindset after all these years is still here. 
faithful in church attendance, but not faithful to his word. If you're not faithful to his word, you're not faithful to him. God requires a standard. He requires a standard of you. He requires a standard of me. He requires a standard of us because he is God. Heaven is not a quiet place. Day and night. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. It's not a quiet place. I don't think there's a single person here that would, in their right mind, say they would not want to go to heaven or don't want to go to heaven. But again, we have to be reminded of what the words that Jesus had taught when he taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who are in heaven, hallowed, holy, reverence is your name. Your kingdom come your will be done where? In earth. As it is in heaven, if we don't practice it here, guess what? You don't get to practice it there. If it's not a part of you here, it would not. He is the God of second chance, third, fourth, and fifth here and now, but one day, guess what? There will be an appointment that you and I are not going to miss. And just like the rich man that was pleading with Abraham for another chance to go warn his brothers, you won't have that opportunity. I love you enough to speak the truth. But most importantly, I love him enough to speak it. Because it applies to each of us. I'm not excluded. It is time. It is past time. For us to be transformed. We can't live this life in these days the same. If you don't see what's in front of you, guess what? You're not going to miss it because it's going to get worse. And rather than complaining about it, you need to start doing something about it. There's a court in to our new president, make America great again, but I tell you, his time in office shouldn't make the church pray again. The word of God tells us to pray for them who are in authority. To you, to each of you, and to each of us. When the scripture lets us know who we are, why do we act like we have no clue? The scripture says that we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. The scriptures say he has given us, not giving, or shall give, given us, not some, but all things that pertain to life and to godliness. Regardless of where you think you are in your social status, 
and economic status. He said, we sit now in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We have to change the way we speak. And it must line up with the way that we think. Scripture even tells us, you just, oh, I don't, I, 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 you know, I really don't have it this time. You know, I'm so, you know, pray for me. Let the weak say that they are strong. Let the poor say that they are rich. That's the word of God. Why, why should we say that? The joy of the Lord is our strength. Why not say that we're strong? The earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. Gold and silver are his. He is our father. We are his children. So the inheritance is. Why not say if you're poor that you are rich? We have to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. I'm here by myself, but Jesus said he'll never leave us nor forsake us. I have no help. The Lord is a very present in a time of trouble. When we say anything contrary to his word, we call him a liar. But guess what? The scripture says he's not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. So who lies when we disagree with his word? And the only way to do this, we must be saved. Not churchgoers, not church attendees. We must be saved. I'm reflecting on something my uncle had said, whose home going I just attended this week in California. This was somewhere around 1993, just sitting down having a conversation with him. And he shared this with me, and it stays with me to this day. He says, you know, those who say that they're Christians, he said, what is the ultimate goal of someone living, living, living a Christian life? I said, it's been eternity in heaven. He said, so help me understand why is it that if we receive certain news letting us know that that time may be nearer than what we first thought, why do we go out of our way to want to delay it? We become saddened. We become depressed. But we say we want to see God. And his words to me was, if I find myself in that position, he said, who am I to delay when he wants to see me? Because surely I want to see him. And immediately after receiving his diagnosis, they said, we can do this, and we can try that, and we can do this, and we can do that. And he says, if I don't, he said, you're going to die. He said, that's God's choosing, not yours. Neither is it mine. So now I leave it in the hands of God. And he lived by that. And it was time for him to go. He went by that. How many of us can sit here today, even now, 
if today was our time, how many of us have the assurance that our name is still written in the Lamb's Book of Life? Well, let's backtrack. How many of us know, not just know, because you have to be saved first and foremost for that to even be possible? So I guess the first question would be how many of us want our names written in the Lamb's Book of Life? Because that's your, that's your policy. <laughs> that's your assurance that once this life is over, you don't stand before the judgment of the great white throne. But if you are saved, the last part of this is to receive the Holy Ghost and do the will of God. 1 Corinthians 2 and 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Matthew 12 and 50, Jesus said, For whosoever shall do the will of my Father, which is in heaven, the same as my brother and my sister and my mother. And the only way any of us can do the will of God is by the Holy Ghost. Because he is, not it, he is the spirit of truth. He is the one that will bring all things back to our remembrance whatsoever Jesus had commanded us. Well, if you're like me, you're going to want to hear this again. And you can do so at our website, www.israelitekojic.org or go to our YouTube channel, Decision Time Enterprises. We look forward to connecting with you. We will be back next week with more word and more power here on the Decision Time broadcast. Until next week, in the words of our pastor, remember you have a miracle in your mouth.